everybody. This is Hammer Striker here. As we all know, Florida's having a problem with invasive pythons. We found this thing slithering around the studio. It's a 2020 Colt Python. So of course I caught it, bagged it up, and promptly took it to the range. It's actually a lot of fun to shoot. It's very easy to shoot well. And it's a very nice looking gun. So let's go ahead and talk about it, go through it a little bit. The thing you see protruding from the cylinder, by the way, that's snap caps. It's inert dummy rounds, so it's not loaded with live ammo. I'll be using that when I test the trigger, because I can't find any mention anywhere of this being dry fire safe. So at this point, I'll assume for the moment it's not. But let's talk about it. And first, I will open it up and show you that they are snap caps. So they're all inert dummy rounds, just to protect the firing pin. The gun itself is large and it's heavy. It weighs 46 ounces. It's polished stainless steel. It's 11 and a half inches front to back, so there's nothing short about this. It's five and a half inches tall. And of course the cylinder sticks out in the grip, so it's, it's 1.55 inches wide. Overall, it is a big gun. However, it's well balanced. Of course, there is weight towards the front, but it feels comfortable to hold. When you've got it out in front of you at the range, it's easy to hold it, keep it comfortable, easy to get a nice solid grip on it. Not pretty much very easy to work with and it's comfortable. This is the six inch barrel version. There is gonna be a 4.25 inch barrel coming out, but come on, if you get a Python, you gotta get it in the six inch barrel. It's that whole profile and look that goes along with the gun. It's chambered in 357 Magnum, as well as 38 Special. And when you fire 38 specials out of this, you might think you're firing 22. There's virtually no recoil with 38 special. And even with 357, flip is minimal. You got a lot of mass out in front there. And you do feel it, of course, in your hand a little bit, but it's not abusive at all. It does have an exposed metal back strap. And the grips, you know, they blend well. These are walnut grips, and they blend well into it very comfortable to hold and I don't feel any compulsion whatsoever to put rubber grips on this. I put about 100 rounds through it today mixed of 38 special 357 Magnum and when I was done I didn't feel tore up at all. My hands weren't sore. Overall it was very comfortable to shoot at. The grips are actually blend nicely. There's no unacceptable gaps. So they just overall are just well done. And that's one thing I'm gonna mention on this gun. The finish on this is quite nice. And we started out with the original Cobra when they reintroduced it, then the King Cobra. And what I've seen is the finish is getting progressively nicer. The Cobra's finish was nice, but it was kind of pebbly. The King Cobra was much smoother and the Python takes that to the next level. Now, of course, this camera picks up every smudge or dust speck that's on the gun. You're going to see some things that might look like defects, and most likely they're fingerprints. And I wiped this thing down and tried to clean it up, but this 4K camera sees everything. You can't hide from this camera. But it's a very nice-looking gun and very smooth lines, very classic lines. They only changed a few things. Uh, I do have access to an original Python. A friend of mine has one, and I'm going to try to get to borrow it to do a comparison old and new but knowing just a few things they did increase these metal content there's about 30 percent more metal up in this area here strengthening under the rear sight and that was one of the weaker parts of the original one that kind of limited some of the more powerful ammo you might have run through it this should be overall stronger and i know a few things have moved like the screw is in a different spot but you know non-functional differences that's the strengthening is the only functional difference i'm aware of between the two but i will see what more i can find so the sights on this are replaceable front and rear the front is a ramp sight with an orange inset in the ramp that came that way it makes it really easy to pick it up you know the black ramp sights are very difficult at least for me to see the top has got kind of a more of a pebbly finish and that cuts the glare. I didn't see I didn't get any glare when I was trying to use this. And then the rear sight is height and wind adjustable. Unfortunately, it's a black target sight, but I did find this and actually easy to pick up. Normally I want a white line or a U or something back there or dots, but I actually found this sight pretty easy to pick up and at this point I might not do anything like painting lines or anything. I may not mess with that sight at all. So it's easy to find your target and get on target. Now let's talk about this trigger. The front of the trigger is serrated. 
but it's it's really smooth rounded serrations so you it's easy to position your finger it's easy to keep your finger on the trigger where you want it but it doesn't bite into your finger at no point was the tip of my finger sore from operating this trigger the weight of the trigger in double action mode is right around eight pounds now of course I do have snap caps and there's one that is when I pull the trigger is going to be chambered but it's a very smooth light pull about eight pounds really feels lighter than eight pounds and then you have to let it all the way out there is a click there but there's another click you have to go to you do have to let it all the way out if you fail to do so then what's going to happen if you only go to that first click then the trigger will be dead it's not broken that's characteristic of almost all double action revolvers that the trigger has to come all the way out to re-engage now I'm going to cycle it once to bring another snap cap into play there's been a couple of videos that I've seen with people having trouble with the trigger not resetting uh, one of them was Hiccup 45 and he's very credible he knows what he's doing he's been around with revolvers so I'm going to imagine that his problems probably real he probably actually has a malfunction with it and but he'll he'll get with Colt and get it fixed I had no problems with this for every round I fired the gun did what it was supposed to do I pulled on the trigger if I did my part right it just worked and I did find it was very easy to make sure I let the trigger all the way out I didn't have to think about it it just did it now let's go to single action mode so you pull the oversized serrated hammer spur back which by the way is real easy to get a hold of it just fits nicely on your thumb as you pull it back of course, like all double action, single action revolvers, the trigger has moved back and you've got a very crisp, very short five pound break. It weighs in at five pounds. I actually suspect it's lighter than that. It's so short and so crisp, it's hard to get off it quickly enough with the meter. So when I'm weighing the trigger, I'm probably adding a little weight to it just because I'm not letting off quickly enough. It breaks that quick. So let me show you that trigger again in case you didn't catch it the first time pull back on the hammer real smooth and, and just silky smooth pulling the hammer back there's no take up I'm starting to put pressure on the trigger and as I put pressure on the trigger trying to do take up it just breaks so again I gut feel as this is really probably in the four pound territory if I could get off it quickly enough while measuring it so if you're looking for the trigger to be what the original pythons were that smoothness that they were known for that lightness and short crispness you're going to get it in this and even the double action pull which i'll do one more time is relatively short there's that's the take up and you, then you feel the take up and then it breaks so it's a relatively short double action pull smooth the whole way and I imagine with a few rounds down range, the trigger's just going to get even smoother than this. So it's really kind of an awesome trigger. Overall, as I've looked at the machining of this, I've only found one defect in it. And it's up on the crown. And you may have a hard time seeing it. The camera may actually... Now there you can see it a little bit. There's a little bit of tool chatter up there. And the, to me, that shouldn't be there. It's, you know, it's one of those things that should not be that way, but it's not really bothering me. The way I look at it is if our business involves you looking at this end of it, probably the tool chatter is not your biggest problem. Overall, I wish it weren't there. That would make the gun perfect if it weren't, but I'm not going to get hung up on it. I don't believe it's going to affect the reliability, the durability, or the longevity of it. Definitely hasn't hurt the accuracy of it. You do have the ventilated rib barrel, which is characteristic of the Python. And one other thing that you know, probably you'll hear about the Python is it's not hand fitted. And some people are kind of making that a uh, big thing to talk about. And in all reality, it's a difference in machining. In the old days, when the original pythons were being made, you had to hand fit because the machining that was the machines that were available at the time, which were the old legacy machines they started making them on day one, couldn't do the precision that was needed for it to work reliably. So you machined it, then you hand finish it, then you put it together. Modern CNC machines are so accurate, they can produce the same part exactly the same every time reliably. The need for hand fitting has kind of gone away. The next step for hand fitting would be for that perfect polish, that gunsmith trigger. But overall, I don't have any problem with the fact that this is CNC machined and machines have done the work versus hand fitting. I think actually you might get a little bit more repeatability. Let me show you oh, one other thing while I got it here. You'll notice it's a full lug all the way across the barrel and I'm just going to kind of show you the various angles of the gun and then I'm going to show you the cylinder 
So again, I pointed out the top, it's got a more matte finish at the top for glare reduction. On the other side, and of course what you're seeing here is the fact I've handled it and every fingerprint on it is showing up, but it's just got a really nice glossy shiny finish with a little bit of a pebble underlay underneath that. It really is a nice looking gun. And then of course these walnut grips with this gold inset which on this one it is pretty much the same on both sides. It's, it's well done, well manufactured. So let me show you the cylinder. And of course on a Colt you'll pull back to open the cylinder as opposed to a Smith where you push forward. The ejector works smooth. One thing I did find with this when I had it at the range, I had no trouble whatsoever ejecting the cases even when it started getting hot and it started getting dirty. And when I was going back and forth between 38 and 357, I wasn't having any trouble putting the 38s in. It just ejected smoothly every single time. And inserting the cartridges was basically drop them in and they went in and away it went. But even this you'll see is well machined, the crane is nice and smooth. Get a little bit of a knurl on the ejector. If I have it away from the frame, it'll actually work. The ejector works nice and smoothly. A little bit of a bevel here at the front of the cylinder. And we did kind of shoot this kind of aggressively, and it did get warm, but at no point did it malfunction or give any grief. And then the ejector goes in and sits flush. Now it does not have recessed cylinders, so the, the, the cartridges will sit on top, as you saw when it was... But of course, it's the spacings are designed for that, so it does work well. If you're looking for a Python, and you're not wanting to pay the premium of one of the original Pythons, this is probably going to be a very good choice. Now, as I mentioned, I had no trouble with it at the range. As we continue to shoot it, if I start to have a problem with it, I'll do a follow-up and let you guys know, at which point I would call Colt and let them take care of it, which I know they will if, if you do have a problem. But this kind of scratches the itch. I've wanted a Python for a very long time. I've looked at the original ones. Prices tend to start 3000 and up for anything that's even worth looking at. And up from there, if you've really got a nice one. These have an MSRP of 1500 Right now, some people are kind of doing the gouging thing. You can get this for around 1390 online if you if you look well. But I'm also seeing prices 2300 plus on the auction sites. That'll settle down once the supply is up there and these you know, or in the local gun stores. They'll settle down probably, I'm going to suspect in the 1250-ish range is probably where they'll settle. But right now, expect to pay close to 1400 for it. If you absolutely positively got to have one now and can't wait, yeah, you might expect to pay uh, two and up. They are going to probably be a relatively reasonably priced, I mean, 1200 is not inexpensive, but reasonably priced revolver for what you're getting with that awesome trigger, the balance, and the ability to shoot it accurately easily. One last thing before we wrap up, let me show you the barrel itself. I did show you the crown, but the, with the exception of that little bit of tool chatter on the crown, the barrel itself is very well machined, smooth all the way through. I don't see any evidence of tool chatter or any kind of defects in there. And when I cleaned it, it cleaned up very easily. So I wasn't having any issue with lead following or anything like that. And I'll show you one of the cylinders. And of course, you are going to get that little carbon ridge from the 38 and 357, and you can spend days trying to get rid of that and, and not. So that's one of the things you get with a revolver, and it's just kind of the way it's going to be. Close it back up. So, in summary, I'm happy with it. I like this thing. And even if I do find that we have that cylinder issue with it, you know, after getting some rounds downrange, once it's fixed, I'm, it's not going to change the fact that I like this revolver. I'm happy I've got it. And of course, keep my eyes open for the Anaconda. I believe that would probably be the next thing we'll see. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there if you do so that you get notified when we put out another video. Check us out on Gunstreamer, Patreon, Twitter, Instagram. Facebook, we're kind of all over the place. Thank you.